الحمد لله رب العالمين الحمد لله تعالى نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونستهديه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهدي الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلن تجد له وليا مرشدا Indeed, all praise is due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, our Lord, the gracious, the merciful, the master of the earth and the heavens, the king of the day of judgment, Azza wa Jal, and the prayers and the blessings of the Almighty subhanahu wa ta'ala be upon our Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and be upon all those who follow in the footsteps of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, نشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد أن محمدا عبد الله ورسوله وصفيه من خلقه وخليله اللهم صل وسلم وبارك على الحبيب المصطفى وعلى آله وصحبه ومن استن بسنته وسار على هديه إلى يوم الدين We bear witness that there is no Lord but the Almighty Allah سبحانه وتعالى and that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the messenger of Allah. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help us to follow the orders of the Almighty Azza wa Jal when he orders us, when he says, Ya ayyuhal ladina amanu attaqullaha haqqa tuqatih wa la tamutunna illa wa antum muslimun Ya ayyuhal ladina amanu attaqullaha wal tanzur nafsum ma qaddamat li ghadin wa attaqullaha إِنَّ اللَّهَ خَبِيرٌ بِمَا تَعْمَلُونَ Oh, you believe, be God conscious and die in no way except in the way of Islam. Oh, you believe, be God conscious and let every soul be aware of its own tomorrow. And fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for he knows best what you do. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to instill taqwa in our hearts, to keep our feet steadfast on his path, to forgive our sins and to strengthen our iman. Allahumma ameen. My dear respected brothers and sisters, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, in so many places when he dictates the meaning of ibadah and the meaning of the worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala onto this earth, we are in constant need of ways to strengthen and to ensure that our implementation of that calling, of that mission, is one that is done in accordance with the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so the scholars constantly advise us in ways on how is it that we expand our understanding of ibadah from the mere rituals that we do to the greater meaning of ibadah that encompasses everything that pleases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so they say ibadah is ismun jami' li kulli amalin aw qawlin yurdu Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala min al-a'mal al-zahirati aw al-a'mal al-batina. That indeed ibadah encompasses everything. Everything that we say, everything that we do, that which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that pleases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, whether it's an action that's seen or whether it's an internal action, meaning the actions of the hearts and so on and so forth. But that's not sufficient, my dear brothers and sisters. When you expand that meaning, it helps you to make everything in your life one that is in accordance with that guidance. Then the next level is to tie it to factors that impact you directly. The factor of time, the factor of place, the factor of condition. And they say that necessitates a level of commitment that reminds you always to perform at the highest level possible. So you take your ibadah from being a restricted ibadah to a certain norm, a certain habit, certain ritual that you have allowed yourself to fall prey to, to something that is tied to the ever presence of your life. Whether it's your time on this earth or whether the place in which you live so that you respond to the circumstance that you're in. And you're able to optimize the ibadah that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala requires of you. And so they talk about what's called ibadatul waqt, ibadatul makan, ibadatul darf. 
So then you do in the time in which you're doing any activity that which pleases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala most. So you start prioritizing. What do I do with the precious moments or seconds that I have on this earth? You start to recognize the value of the time that you're given. For there is no other commodity that we have that is limited on this earth other than the commodity of time, my dear brothers and sisters. There's no such thing as time is money. Time is life. And so you start to not only prioritize and not only use its value, but you start recognizing that the best way to spend that time is to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala where you are needed most. And so if it's that pressure time, precious time you spend taking care of your children, or if it's that time in which you are called to say the word of truth or to stand for the cause of justice, or it's the time that you need to invest in your soul so that you can remain steadfast in the dark hours of the night. You start making sure that your ibadah is your pathway to the salvation to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so it doesn't become a, a routine matter. It doesn't become an easy matter. It becomes a very important undertaking every moment. And then ibadatul makan where you recognize that the place where you are is the output for the very mission that you're entrusted with. And so knowing that reality, living it, being able to understand how best to affect it most becomes a must and an undertaking that you must give yourself the ability to develop and do the best that you can. And so we become ever present in the environment we're in, whether it's Arabia or whether it's 21st century America. The deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is timeless. It's a universal guidance that requires of all of us the perfect implementation of its tenets every moment and every place we're in. And lastly, what they call ibadatul dharf, which is to recognize the condition you're in. So you're optimally always optimizing your output. If you're sick and you're in need of patience and, 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 and self strength and so on and so forth, then your ibadah becomes geared towards building those reserves. But if you are asked to be a witness, if you're asked to be the healthy, wealthy, able individual, then you must be there to alleviate the sufferings of others, to take care of the poor, to give for the cause of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and not to think that that's not a place that you're required to be in. So my dear brothers and sisters, when we look at the life of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, there is a passage of verses in Surah Al-Isra in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam a time to be aware of one's time, of one's circumstance. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala most high provides him the answers on how to deal with the challenges of your time. Remember the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when he's exhausted his efforts to spread da'wah in Mecca. And he was preparing to migrate sallallahu alayhi wa sallam because of the reception he's received from the people in Biyatrib and so on and so forth. There is a passage in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells him that the people of Mecca or Quraysh, they were trying to Make it very hard for you. Pressure you so that you can leave and so that you can give up. And that they're trying their utmost to make it hard for you, difficult for you. But then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminds him, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that this is the pathway of those who are entrusted with the delivery of the message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Sunnata man qad arsalna qablaka min rusulina wa la tajidu li sunnatina tahwila. That this is a path that all of us will undertake. And so today I want to talk about those challenges that we must forecast in our challenge to live our Islam to the fullest within our own society, within our own time, within our own place. 
And it's important, my dear brothers and sisters, to think about these challenges because when we come together as a community and when we illustrate, alhamdulillah, our numbers, our strengths, our hearts, our minds, our children that are growing to be, inshallah, leaders of the future of their nation, maybe we can talk about some of the weaknesses that we have. Maybe there is some disunity. Maybe there is some weak infrastructure. Maybe there is some weakness that we can identify. But part of that exercise, my dear brothers and sisters, is also looking at the opportunities that befall us. And if we're imbibed with the guidance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, every moment is a chance for us to, inshallah, get the ajr from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Again, doing the most at any moment that will gain us the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. But there's also challenges, my dear brothers and sisters. And I wanted us to reflect on some of those so that we can think ahead, plan ahead, figure out that those of us that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tested by making them the witnesses upon the American ummah are ready for the challenge. Are ones that can not only forecast their future, but they will do everything they can in order to ensure that that future is in the arc of history of this nation so that inshallah we will be the makers and the developers of the better vision that we have for America. And when we look at the ayat that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala enlightened the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam with, he tells him to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala this dua. وَقُلْ رَبِّ أَدْخِلْنِي مُدْخَلَ صِدْقٍ وَأَخْرِجْنِي مُخْرَجَ صِدْقٍ وَاجْعَلْ لِي مِنْ لَدُنْكَ سُلْطَانًا نَصِيرًا This is, it comes with the passage which I will come back again to, in which the scholars say that the Prophet sallallahu Yes, in the context of the events of him deciding to leave a place and to have a restart somewhere else, some of the Mufassirun talked about it in the fact that he's asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make his matter of truth and of ease, leaving and entering into the next phase that he has to do, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But it talks more about the fact that it is our constant embracement of our deen aware of the time we live in, aware of the place we're in, aware of the circumstance that may afflict us or gives us opportunity, that we're always looking for the support of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to figure out best what can we do, what can we change, what can we transform, both from within and from without, meaning from within ourselves. And they say that when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives you sultan and nasira waj'al li min ladunka sultan and nasira Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives you the enlightenment of the mind and the strength of the heart and the steadfastness of the foot to be able to maneuver the challenges that are ahead of you. And so if we are to understand what these challenges are then we are to have the same means by which we will prepare for. For Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would tell the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam the steps that he needs to do in order for him to succeed. Soon after the last verse I recited, أَقِمِ الصَّلَاةَ لِدُلُوكِ الشَّمْسِ إِلَىٰ غَسَقِ اللَّيْلِ وَقُرْآنَ الْفَجْرِ إِنَّ قُرْآنَ الْفَجْرِ كَانَ مَشْهُودًا وَمِنَ اللَّيْلِ فَتَهَجَّدْ بِهِ نَافِلَةً لَكْ عَسَىٰ أَنْ يَبْعَثَكَ رَبُّكَ مَقَامًا محمودا. وَقُلْ رَبِّ أَدْخِلْنِي مُدْخَلَ صِدْقٍ وَأَخْرِجْنِي مُخْرَجَ صِدْقٍ وَاجْعَلْ لِي مِنْ لَدُنْكَ سُلْطَانًا نَصِيرًا وَقُلْ جَاءَ الْحَقُّ وَزَهَقَ الْبَاطِلِ إِنَّ الْبَاطِلَ كَانَ زَهُوقًا وَنُنَزِّلُ مِنَ الْقُرْآنِ مَا هُوَ شِفَاءٌ وَرَحْمَةٌ لِلْمُؤْمِنِينَ وَلَا يَزِيدُ الظَّالِمِينَ إِلَّا خَسَارًا A prescription for us that I find very relevant, my dear brothers and sisters, one of the biggest challenges for anybody who decides to live in America today is for him to be able to preserve his Islam, for him to be able to preserve that Islam for his children, for him to be able to live Islam, and for him to be able to make da'wah for Islam, 
And for him to be able to stop against this aggressive materialism that's rampant. And for him to be able to ensure that the health of his children and his own health intellectually and in, a, in, a, in, in, li, and in living circumstance is one that is in accordance with the guidance of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so when you bring your children here and you decide to raise them here, then you can't be oblivious to this challenge. You have to prepare them and you have to prepare yourself and you have to prepare your spouse and to have to prepare your household for how is it that we can constantly remain steadfast despite the challenges that are affronting us. And the matters of tazkiyah and the matters of tarbiyah and the matters of returning to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when we look at the instructions he gave to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, first few verses talk about this being a challenge, this is being the sunnah that Allah will impose on everybody who wants to go on the path of upholding the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then he gives him the prescription of connecting with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, spending his nights in the prayers to the Almighty Azza wa Jal ensuring that his pathway of salah is one that is a secure line with the Almighty Allah Azza wa Jal. And so my dear brothers and sisters, the beginning of this fight is the realignment with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You can't lose the battle within if you want to win the battle outside. And you can't allow your circumstance to be one where your children are a victim of your irresponsibility and lack of readiness. We cannot, my dear brothers and sisters, lose our second generation or third generation. We must support our institutions and our masajid. We must stand strong to remain a united community. Yes, aligned with its time and yes, aligned with its circumstance, but one that is aware of the challenges ahead. And your brothers and sisters here in Dar al-Hijra or across the United States. Amongst us today is the Secretary General of the United States Muslim Community Organization. All the organizations across the United States. Brother Osama Jamal, Jazallah Khair, and many others. Working day and night to ensure that we have the venues through which we can preserve and strengthen that Islam. Challenge number one. But it all starts from within as well. We must be the ones who are connecting with the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, with the guidance of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and with everything that we can to maintain, the ibadat and the salawat, and everything that keeps us steadfast, my dear brothers and sisters. Now there are challenges for us here as a community, some of which stems from the need for us to understand our Islam within the context of where we live. Understanding Islam through a purposeful, objective-driven, maqasidi understanding of the divine message of La ilaha illallah within an American context. And you can't start that challenge without living and understanding the book of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, living and understanding the life of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and his sunnah, being well-versed in the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and well-versed in the circumstance that you live in. And so we need to develop and drive the scholarship necessary for us to have an understanding of Islam that can face the challenges that are rampant around us. And so when you see your children baffled or puzzled by this aggressive liberalism that lives in American society, the practices of some that are, are antithetical to everything that we believe in. You can't leave them alone in that battle. We can't leave these issues to, to, rub, to just put them under the rug. We have to face them. And we have to recognize what is the constant and what is the variable. The constant is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says. The constant is what the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam does. And the variables are the objectives of the sharia where we understand that we live in a society that is based on diversity and tolerance and, and certainly pluralism. But we are also in need of defining our Islam and bringing forth what our Islam is about to the rest of the society through our own means 
and across our own lenses, not through self-censorship or others who define what Islam is. It is high time, my dear brothers and sisters, for us to be the ones that dictate what Islam says and dictates what Islam means within the greater construct of the American pluralism. And if we don't take this issue seriously, we're going to see the fundamentals of our deen wither away because of the external pressure. Because it is inevitable for us as a community to live the nature of this society which is consistent with our ability to practice our religion freely, but at the same time to be understanding of the different cultures and religions that exist within the same society. And we have plenty of fiqh, whether it's the fiqh of the minorities or the fiqh of our deen, which impues the values, the universal values upon which human practice is based. We can navigate through those waters, but we got to do it in our own terms. We got to define our own terms. And we got to be able to understand this context through scholarship and through loyalty and through a deep understanding of the very faith that we proclaim. When we do so, not only do we bring light to the very principles that define this deen and that will improve on the human condition and will crown this human experiment we call America, but it also allows us to remain steadfast in the face of challenge and in the face of others who try to redefine Islam or undermine the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And so this public private divide is very important and we need to deal with identifying our Islamic principles living the understanding the divine message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through a purposeful understanding that is in, in line or that is in sync with the circumstance we live in in America and this is an exercise that's not undertaken by one scholar or one person or one group but rather, this is a challenge that we face every single day. And it requires expertise on both ends, one that must be produced from within our community. And so we must build scholarship within our communities. We must build social scientists and, and, and people who are able to dissect and understand the American experiment and, and understand the circumstances that other communities go through so that we can bring to fruition, inshallah, a robust understanding of our deen that's capable of being a change maker, being one that will transform the realities around us. We also need to understand the circumstance in which America was born and in which this circumstance of a constitution framework that allows us not only the freedom to practice our deen, but also to celebrate the very values and principles we believe in. People, when they describe the separation of state and church, they think it's something that is so anti. In fact, there's no such thing in the Islamic understanding. There is an understanding that the Western experience was born out of the oppression of the church as an institution and imposing itself on the lives of the human beings. And so the rejection of that is consistent with our understanding of our deen. But in America, we celebrate the deen and religion as a source of values and principles. And if that was not available historically with other religions, that's an experience that does not bring about a similarity to our experience. In Islam, Islam was the very source of the universal values that we have learned that enabled us to lead civilization for over a thousand years. Islam is the embodiment of the universal values that the Almighty Azza wa Jal brought to improve on the human condition. And so when we embrace American diversity and when we embrace those issues, we need not limit ourselves. We need to understand the dynamic of the public versus private. And we need to understand the central ideas of diversity and pluralism because we want to preserve the rights of others to worship and to practice and to engage but let our values shine. Let our challenge become on how can we embrace these universal values in practice and in language and let us become the productive members that lead and improve on the human condition in the country we love, the country that we call America, 
That's how we can become real Muslims and strong Muslims here. And that allows us, my dear brothers and sisters, to face up to the other challenges that may be ahead of us when we see, alhamdulillah, the growth and the development of our community and our ability to become, we talk about, alhamdulillah, having our children run for public office. We talk about having the candidates, we have a candidate form tomorrow, inshallah, after Salat al Ishahir and Dar al Hijra, in which one of our own, a young girl who grew up in this community, and by Allah, we have put nothing but the fear of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and the love of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in her heart to be a good representative, inshallah, of our community. And many of our children are like that. And in fact, most of them have to be like that, if not all of them. And that's how we can transform. And that's how we can improve, my dear brothers and sisters. We have the challenge of how do we lead the change that will impact our ummah and our world nations because of the suffering we see and the challenges we face and we can't do it if we can't be a champions of justice my dear brothers and sisters on every circumstance and at every level with the courage and the perseverance and the patience that will allow us to move forward and change that which we see is wrong and enjoying the good and forbid the evil nothing stops us from here from from doing that my dear brothers and sisters not the lack of knowledge, not the lack of understanding, not even the corrupt policies. Everything is for us to attain. And we can only impose a ceiling that we put on ourselves, nobody else. Because my dear brothers and sisters, the source of our values is in the heavens. And our extent, by extension, our dreams and our aspirations are, will reach the heavens, inshallah. My dear brothers and sisters, let us remain steadfast. Let us be able to withstand, inshallah, the pressures. And let us project the challenges ahead. So, inshallah, we can prepare our youth and we can prepare our communities, inshallah, to always be in the forefront of the blessings of the deen of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to instill taqwa in our hearts, to keep us steadfast, to enlighten our hearts and our minds so that we can carry the mission. I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgiveness. Aqulu qawli hada wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum fa astaghfiru innahu ghafuru rahim. الحمد لله رب العالمين حمدا كثيرا طيبا مباركا فيه والصلاة والسلام على الحبيب المصطفى وعلى آله وصحبه ومن وله. My dear respected brothers and sisters, I want to remind you that there is a janazah inshallah afterwards, so please stay so that we can pray after salah. I want to remind you also to help and support your masjid, the home that is inshallah is reaching its fruition and reaching its mission alhamdulillah. 30 some years ago, many were youngsters in this place today their parents and their fathers and mothers and alhamdulillah we're seeing a robust younger generation coming because our community is building and and strengthening itself and being strong we have a great program here in Dar al hijra where you give monthly no matter how little you want to give give 25 give 50 give 100 give 500 may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala increase and bless your your wealth and your 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 blessings but make it a constant contribution because we need steady work and we need consistent organized development inshallah of our community and we need your engagement and involvement so please support your brothers and sisters who are doing this work please remember to sign up inshallah for this recurrent pledge and ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide us and forgive us Allahumma afu anna wa ghafir lana wa arhamna anta maulana fansurna ala al-qawm al-kafirin Allahumma ahdina wa ahdi bina اللهم آتي نفوسنا تقواها وزكها مولايا أنت خير من زكاها أنت وليها ومولاها عباد الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذو القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعظكم لعلكم تذكرون فاذكروا الله يذكركم وادعوه يستجب لكم ولذكر الله أكبر والله يعلم ما تصنعون وقوموا إلى الصلاة يرحمكم الله وأقم الصلاة. سكر الخير.